Hello, Build Show. Steve Basic Architect here. I'm out at our job site here where Shoreline Builders is doing a beautiful job. And if you remember, a couple weeks ago, we did a sub slab insulation video where we talked about the type 9 EPS, the two inches that we ran under the slab. Well, as you can see, the slab is in. So I wanted to return here. I grabbed a few materials here out of the garage that we could just do a really quick mock-up. But I wanted to talk about the continuity of that uh, insulation control layer in the basement. So we'll go over to this corner. You can see here, if I pull the poly away, you can see that type 9 EPS, we have the two inches there that turns up the edge of the slab and it goes down and goes across underneath the slab. But how do we maintain that continuity? Well, we have this two inches of polyiso foam that'll get pushed up against the wall. It'll come down and it'll connect that bottom face of the insulation to the top face of that EPS. And then we'll have continuity running all the way up the wall. And then you'll see in the joist bay here, we have our closed cell insulation, which takes it right up underside of the uh, wood framed wall above. So, and you know, the, the homeowners, we're gonna do a uh, foil faced insulation that's rated for exposure down here. But one of the things that you can do in the future, you notice I threw the two by four in front of it. We could do a two by four framed wall in front, and then you'll have the option to do an R15 bat or blown in insulation in there to add to the insulation level of the basement. So anyways, let's uh, go over to the other side of the basement. I just wanted to show you another quick detail here. Um, we'll walk across because, you know, one of the things I like working with Jim and Shoreline Builders, you know, they get it. So here you can see the electrical panels are in, but more importantly, if you go in here and you look down, you notice that there's rigid insulation already behind the panel. So, you know, this is that where experience and wisdom comes in where, although we have this and we need that panel to go up so the electrician can do his stuff, the insulation has already been placed behind that wall so that when we bring the insulation up from the slab, it just simply marries into that. So, you know, again, Jim and the guys at Shoreline Taylor, they do a beautiful job. They're a dream to work with. So let's jump back to the studio and uh, we'll take over from here and look at some details now of here of basement insulation. So we'll see you back there. Hey, welcome back to the studio. Hopefully you enjoyed that uh, little tour out there. Um, you know, sometimes maybe it's a little nicer if I have a uh, camera person, but you know, seeing my perspective, I guess, isn't such a bad thing either. So. It's always exciting uh, talking about basement insulation. I don't know if there's, uh, well, I guess there are some other exciting parts of the building, but uh, anyways, that's the uh, the tour there, basement insulation. I uh, broke out our good friend. We got lots to talk about here. Broke out a detail, zoomed it up into uh, scale. So uh, without further ado, let's have at it. All right, let's uh, put big red to work here. So give you some orientation. There is our concrete footing. And here is our edge of concrete wall. And what you saw me uh, peel back out there was there was a piece of poly right here. So it was installed on top of the rigid insulation, which is right here, right? All of this was installed prior to casting the concrete slab here. So we put that two inches of type nine insulation in there. You can see it right there. Two inches type nine. And the reason for type nine and it's not type nine like that, it's type nine like that, Roman numeral. And the reason for the type nine, it's twofold. One, it's rated for low grade. And two, it carries a compression rating of 25 PSI, which I've done this math a whole bunch of times and I still forget, but I think it's in excess of something like 1200 PSF, right? So 
anyways, it's 25 times 144, so whatever that is. Um, anyways, it's really strong stuff. How about that? We'll leave it at that. But more importantly, we put that insulation in there in sequence to casting that concrete slab. You saw I peeled that insulation away and we were able to peek in here and we saw that two inch face of that EPS tucked behind that piece of poly. So what will happen now is Jim and his guys at Shoreline, they'll just, they'll put this piece in, they'll run that poly up, and they'll tape it off um, on there. And then we get continuity of two things, right? We get the continuity of the two inches of insulation here because now that is matched with two inches of Thermax on the wall here. Um, I called two inch rigid insulation, just rated for exposure. But that two inch Thermax comes with a foil face. So that foil face does a couple things along with the foam. It, it makes it rated for an exposed condition. So you can't you can't just put rigid insulation down there and leave it because when it burns, bad things happen. It's hard to breathe. People would die if they uh, took that in. So we need a little bit of time down there for people to get out of the building in case of a fire before it gets real ugly. So it has to be rated for exposed condition. The other thing about that poly is, is it becomes a vapor retarder, right? So... That poly now that comes under here comes up and it gets taped off here and we have continuity, right? What's my favorite word, everybody? Continuity. I'll tell you what, I can't even tell you how much of a challenge it is all the time to write stuff and make sure you were spelling it right. Because inevitably I get somebody saying, I ain't spelled continuity wrong. Um, anyways, that's my uh, alter ego talking there. But con continuity is what? Continuity is key. And I don't know, you know, for those of you that have been watching me for over the last uh, year, you understand that there's a lot of um, things that maintain continuity, like the fact that I always say continuity is key, right? When building, continuity is one of the best and most important things to deal with, especially when we're talking about control layers, right? Because control layers is how we gain control of the building. And why do we want to gain control of the building? Because that's the whole purpose for a building being, is because it gives us a controlled environment that doesn't exist in the natural world, right? We can air condition it, we can heat it, we can humidify it, dehumidify it, we can get out of the wind, get out of the rain, all those things. That's why we live in buildings. Anyways, so we run that two inches under the slab. We put... In this case, we did a six mil polyethylene and we brought it, we lapped the joints under there, but we bring it up, extended up the wall a minimum of 12 inches and they just taped it off as you saw. And then they'll peel that back and let it lay flop on the top of the slab. And then they'll come in and they'll install the, sec the other two inches of rigid insulation. That's usually a polyiso. And polyiso is short for polyiso cyanurate. How about that? All right, so that two inches of polyiso goes in there and that'll run all the way up the wall to the top of the wall and then connect with um, some closed cell foam that'll go into the band joist area. And then we'll simply bring that uh, six mil poly up and then we'll just have a piece of tape where they'll tape over it. And then later, if the homeowner wanted to, um, you could come in and do a framed wall and run a framed wall up the inside of this and drywall it because now we're not worried about any moisture migration because it's going to get stopped by that poly, right? So no moisture can migrate in there. And uh, we have that, it's thermally protected. So if any moisture migrates in this way, this surface of the foil is going to be a warm surface, which means that the water vapor isn't going to phase change to a liquid water and become a problem for us. We'll have this wall here so that we can carry drywall or whatever finish. And then you'd always have the option to do an unfaced bat in here and add to the insulation value of that wall system on the inside. 
So, but remember, continuity is key. You saw it out there. Turning that corner, you know, people often always ask, what's the, the most important part of under slab insulation? Well, I break it down into three pieces. One, slab edge. Slab edge is number one. Got to have it. Right? That's the most important part. We don't want a thermal break across that surface. Right? We don't want the slab touching the wall. Two, if we wanted to bring the foam, at a minimum, we extend this 24 inches. So that's number two. All right. And number three is continuous all the way across the slab to the other side. And that's what we did here at the house. That's what I do on most of my projects. We just run it all the way. But if you're if you're sitting there and you're budget minded, if you're trying to figure out, okay, I like what Steve is doing there, but we just can't afford to run it across the whole slab, then run it two feet across. And if you can't do the two feet, then please at least get that slab edge in here and uh, thermally break that slab from the wall. Um, as a side note, some of you might be wondering, there's a piece of rigid insulation out here and you can see although it's drawn as rigid insulation and it is a rigid insulation it's really a protection board the uh, the homeowner here is actually he owns a masonry waterproofing company so he had his guys come out and did a beautiful job waterproofing the outside of the foundation wall and then this two inches here that you see is basically a protection board so when they backfill all of this dirt here we're not challenging the integrity of that beautiful waterproofing that they put in there it actually the insulation takes the beating of the backfill so that the integrity of the uh, waterproofing stays in place and stays true so um yeah, I mean, last couple other things, you know, some of the stuff you already know, we, we have a perimeter drain in here. We have our holes, that perimeter drain sits in a bed of stone here. And, uh, you know, this one drains to a sump pump. Consequently, this is a pretty low risk basement. We've been out there a number of times. And when you look in the sump pump, water's probably in about the bottom you know, four or five inches, it never comes up to the pipe, which suggests that water isn't even making it up to this level. So I'd consider that somewhat of a low risk environment for what we have going on out there. But uh, anyways, that's it. Basement insulation, it's that simple. Remember, continuity is key. It always is, it always will be. And in your world, it should be so that's it for that detail all right everybody big red has uh, drawn his last line for the day so hopefully you enjoyed that um, you know basement insulation it's uh, maybe not the most exciting part of the building but uh, certainly uh, a piece that's heavily overlooked and that maybe shouldn't be so Anyways, if you're looking for more information, you can find me on Steve Basic Architect on Instagram. And uh, we're putting up stuff there daily for you to uh, take a look at. Um, my daughter, Alexandra Bazak, is also on Instagram. Follow her. She's always putting up some good details and uh, sitting there right alongside of me and uh, cranking out some work. Um, the other gentleman on the Build Show Network, right? I mean, science says, you hear me say it before, you got to watch each of these videos at least seven times to really grasp the information. That's just what, you know, um, the scientists are telling me. So I'm going by the science. Um, but anyways, Matt, Wade, Brent, Jake, all of them, fantastic at what they do. I watch all their videos and uh, you should too. So just great content, up to date, loving what they're doing. All those guys, good friends. Good projects, good info. So go check it out. Lastly, my good friends Jake and Peter join me on the Unbuilded podcast, um, which is now on YouTube. You can find it on YouTube and all the podcast outlets like Spotify and iTunes, all that good stuff. But you can now watch our antics on YouTube. So go check that out on the Un Unbuilded show there. 
And uh, you can watch our podcast. Uh, I think we had a really good one that uh, dropped yesterday. Yeah, we were talking about uh, prefab, prefabbing buildings. So anyways, great topic. Go check it out. Uh, until next time, long live our buildings.